It's time to do the hard part of this big block swap. It's time to wire up the Terminator. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage. Check it out. Project Country Club. The sun was shining yesterday. I got it out, drove it, got a check engine light. Pretty sure the mass airflow sensor is having issues. Need to pull the codes, but today it's snowing. So pretty typical. Get something like this out of storage and it starts snowing. But who cares about that? Today we are doing the Terminator wiring on the Nova, the smoke monster. Ugh. Check out the merch down below. Get yourself a Smoke Monster hoodie. Help support the channel. And they're super comfortable. They're super comfortable. So what do we gotta do? We got to, well, we gotta run the harness for the Terminator. And we've changed plans because as I said, there's just nowhere for us to feed this cannon plug through. And so I think what we'll do is mount it somewhere over here by the heater box, kind of at an angle, out of the way. And because of that, the harness that comes with these things, it's stupid long it's like eight foot long it's crazy here it is this is the mess that we have to install on our motor look at all this but what we have here is this connector kit 558448 which is the two primary connectors for holly and it's not just the terminator these are the same connectors that we use whenever we're doing something like a dominator etc this is uh connector one and connector two or connector a and connector b as they call it and this one comes with the connectors itself and the pins you can get just the pins if you want to do it that way but i figured it would be easier to uh do it one wire at a time and make sure that the the wire that's in pin one goes to pin one on the new connector so what we're going to do is lay our harness out get everything hooked up where it needs to be plugged in where it needs to be we'll probably take most of the loom off that factory harness or the the stock setup harness get it to where we want to find our location where we're going to mount our terminator and then we can start repinning into these new connectors shorten all the harnesses up to where they're perfect then we'll come back and throw some loom on it to clean it up so yeah Let's start there. Okay, I've got most of the harness kind of unwrapped back and I found where I think is our termination point of our new one. So we're wanting to remove, you know, what, three foot or so of harness here. Yeah, about three foot of harness. Uh, a couple of the uh, end points here though, I want to extend specifically the coil connectors, even though there's one right there, ignition even. Uh, the problem is, is that they're just so tangled up and wrapped up in other sensors. This harness is a mess. Uh, it really didn't isolate much out short of maybe, this is your IAC, TPS, fuel pressure, coolant temp sense, and manifold air temp. So that's a nice section to go out front. I'll probably uh, cut this one back a ways, but all of these things have a bunch of... Okay, as I lean further and further towards just doing a new harness build, I went ahead, mounted up a plate, fabbed up a plate for putting the Terminator on here. Give me an idea where I need to start and ideally be able to come off here and kind of go underneath and around to the different points that we've got to hit. So, gotta start somewhere. I'm still just trying to figure out what the best route is gonna be for getting everything where it needs to go. I need to see, I'm probably gonna have to relocate my regulator because my water hoses go right there. Okay, so I went ahead and busted out my equipment for my other setup here that we were running with the AEM and of course we've got Deutsch connectors on here and, and that kind of reminded me we've got Deutsch connectors everywhere on all that stuff which is our map 
IAT, IAC, uh, TPS. We've got Deutsch connectors on our coils. We've got Deutsch connectors everywhere except for on our injector harness. This is the Holly injector harness. We can easily swap that over to a Deutsch connector. So we're just going to build the harness from scratch. Instead of dealing with this spaghetti, we'll take out what we need, some of this stuff, uh, like the power relay for our injectors and, and uh, ignition and things like that. Even our uh, Dizzy, our, our dual sink, wherever it's at, somewhere over here, it's got a Deutsch connector on it. So we'll just keep the trend going on. Oh yeah, look at Project Country Club. Out in the snow, the beautiful, beautiful snow. And I did pull the code on this and it was the mass airflow sensor. Uh, so I'm just going to get a replacement on the way. I think this one probably is just going bad. Okay, believe it or not, it's been a couple days since I actually started this video and I've been working on this harness. I decided to go ahead and build it from scratch after looking at the Holly harness. It's an absolute mess. And I'm not going to uh, sit here and make you watch me uh, terminate out, you know, 70 wires on these things. Uh, you know, we're using that connector kit that I talked about earlier. It comes with the pins. Make sure you use the right style crimpers for crimping these Holly pins. These 20 gauge ones are very imperative that you do. I'm using these uh, IWIS SN-20. 28 B's. I'll try and put a link down below. Uh, and these are 0.1 to 1 millimeter uh, crimpers. They are working pretty good on the smallest die. And if you don't get these crimped properly, they're next to impossible to get into these connectors because the ports are so small on them. So I just did want to talk a little bit about that. Now on the other side, we're using Deutsch connectors. And so on that, we're using barrel crimpers and I've got multiple sets of barrel crimpers. And in fact, I picked up this set uh, from Wire Care, and it's their master set that comes with three different sizes of barrel uh, connectors, things like that. And then of course, I'm always uh, generally getting my Deutsch connectors from uh, customconnectorkit.com because I can order them in kits. And the nice thing is on the door, they've got all the replacement parts. Wire Care carries them all, so, uh, you know, so there's, there's plenty of places. Wirecare is really good for individual connectors because they have a uh, builder uh, on their website where you can go in and say how many pins you want it'll, and it'll load up all the pins and stuff like that. If you're going to be doing a large project like this though, I like custom connector kits, layouts, comes with everything you need and so we're getting this stuff knocked out. And Right now I'm actually working on the uh, TPS and IAC sub harness. That's going to be the first one that goes to both harness B and harness A on the Terminator X. And then whenever we're all said and done, we've got a lot of loose wires here that will end up being spliced together. These are power, uh, 12 volt power for ignition and uh, our injectors and ignition, same ordeals. Uh, these are grounds over here that are bridged together. And then we'll have some more that are gonna be five volt sources. And if you roll back the sleeve, you can see that I've used uh, Brady Permasleeve, which is a heat shrink wire marker. If you've got a Brady machine, it's expensive. It's about 45 bucks for the, uh, the module, the cassette for this stuff. But whenever it's all said and done, if I need to, I can come in here and find specifically which wires are which. And in this case, I've been going through using the Holly diagram. This is the end that goes over to my sub harness that I've got on the TPS and IAC. Using the Holly diagram, and running them back and I've got them marked with the pin number on the holly. So this goes into A5, you know, this one goes into B9. And so it makes it a nice way of doing all this over here on the bench without having to stare at a wiring diagram. Then whenever I'm done, I can just use the numbers on the connectors themselves to land it, everything's good to go. And what we'll end up doing is whenever we get the entire harness done and get everything that we need in there, which will be a, probably about 15 wires short from the other one because we don't have to populate all this stuff we're not using. We're not going to be using a knock sensor to start off with. We're not going to be uh, using a lot of the spare I.O. and stuff like that. But we can always go back in later and add it. Something to keep in mind, these have a positive retention locking system. See these two white tabs up there? Whenever those are up, that means it is unlocked. And whenever you're done, you pop these down and it locks the pins in place. If you ever need to go take a pin out or add another pin back in, if you look on the bottom side, there's a long white slot on there. You can push up on that and that unlocks everything once again. So pretty nice little connectors. 
works pretty good. So I'm gonna get back to it. We'll do a review here in a second as we start laying the harness across the car and seeing how it turned out. Okay, so the harness is about 95% eh, done. Got it in. We've got some things to finish up here. These are our ignition power and ground. Uh, this is our relay out that goes to our ignition relay for things like the fuel pump. And then we've got uh, ignition power in from the ignition switch to turn on the terminator. And then our tachometer out to go over to our tachometer. So we've got everything kind of routed behind. Plenty of room. Here's our uh, cam crank for our dual sink. It's our fuel connector. Kind of get that out of the way. Injectors are hooked up. Coils are hooked up on both sides. Ran along the back side. Here's our wide band cable over here. It's just tucked into the fender right now. Uh, then we've got our IAC TPS cable. I'm waiting for a TPS to show up. And then we have our sensor extension. And right now all I've got on there is the coolant temp sense, but we'll be adding fuel pressure, uh, possibly oil pressure, and then of course manifold air temp. So. We'll be running all of those. We're gonna be using the built-in uh, map sensor. So we'll run this over, pour it into the back of the Edelbrock there and block off the one there. And then there's a couple more ports underneath here. So that is, the wiring's basically done. As I said, I've got five wires and a relay. I've gotta get the relay mounted up and tied into the system. It comes back, it'll tie into, as I said, our ignition power that goes out to our coil packs. And then it'll also tie into the fuel pump, which the, the power line for the fuel pumps down underneath there. And electrically, it's done. Still, I gotta go pick up the belts tomorrow uh, for the alternator and power steering. As I said, kind of button this up, at least clean it up, get it out of the way. And then hopefully the TPS will be here tomorrow. I've got a new cable that I've gotta get installed. And I've got to build a little bracket for our to hold the cable uh, because honestly, it's, I'm having a hard time finding one other than the Motion one that's a hundred dollars. I've already got the one for the Holly elbow, so I'm not buying another one. I'll just build a little bracket, aluminum bracket off of here with a square in it uh, to be able to mount the cable up there. Should be good to go there, and then throw the spark plugs in. I've got those already. Got to throw the oil filter on uh pull my coolant temp gauge through there here's the other coolant temp the electrical one and my coolant temp gauge will go there since it's mechanical got to run the oil pressure down over to the oil filter and we're about ready fill her up with fluids and rocking and rolling so just want to give you guys kind of an overview of how we're doing the wiring on this next we will be getting into uh, setting up the Terminator X. Uh, I don't have the three and a half inch display, so we're not really walking through that. I've walked through that on the Sniper EFI, so I've got a video out there on that. There's plenty of guys that have walked through the, the steps on the three and a half, including the guys over at Holly. so there's nothing crazy there. But we'll be going into the software and setting the software up for this, and we'll be using kind of one of the default uh, setups that they have in the system are saved on there but of course they're not going to have one that has this aggressive of a cam for a 598 so we'll kind of touch on how to get things set up for a custom setup like this if you're running a terminator or even a dominator or a sniper or something like that so make sure and stick around if you haven't already hit the subscribe button throw a thumbs up if you enjoy content like this uh, hit up the comments don't forget to check out the websites uh, goatropegarage.com you can get to the patreon through there and that's how you get tuning assistance i know i've got people that ask me every time how do i get tuning assistance they email me it's all through the patreon and then check out the merch bar down below you know snag yourself a sweet smoke monster hoodie you're going to be one of rocking one of these whenever you see this car out at uh, rocky mountain race week this year so keep your eyes peeled for that i'm getting back to it thanks for stopping by the garage you guys know the drill abt always be tuning